Good morning. I'm going to turn that light up. Or can you see me? I don't think you can see me. All right, that's better. <clears throat> okay, so lately here in the homestead, we have been selling a lot of meat rabbits. We already have meat in the freezer, but a lot of people are concerned about being able to feed their families and not have to have a very large investment in space and um, original um, input for cost for structures and that kind of thing. So even though I'm not sure that rabbits are necessarily the fastest, best way to put food in your freezer if you're just starting out for that, I think just buying an animal, having it butchered and putting it in your freezer is the best bet. But as far as being able to get into the process of being able to butcher something, getting into the process of doing the math on feed versus what actually ends up being on your table, rabbits are a great place to start. One of the reasons for that is because they're completely contained. Um, they really don't take a lot of space. Uh, good morning, Village Stetter. Um, the, the animal I think is actually the easiest is maybe quails or muscovy ducks. Muscovy ducks are very, very, very quiet, much quieter than chickens, much quieter than quail, and they're very mild and kind little birds. Muscovies are amazing. Um, quail are also fun, but they do make some noise. They're kind of like a rabbit in that you can contain them really easily, but they do make a little noise. So if you're trying to be incognito, I would say my first pick would be Muscovy ducks. <laughs> and, and as far as the quiet factor, then it would probably be rabbits. Hello, Darlene. Okay. So the first thing I would say about meat rabbits is make sure to buy them your breeding stock from somebody who actually puts rabbits in the freezer on a regular basis. Don't get somebody who has show rabbits. Don't get somebody who's just a hobbyist with a mutt breed in their backyard. Um, the other thing I'd say is do not buy from somebody who keeps their rabbits on dirt. Make sure that they keep them in a wire cage so that they're not going to be bringing parasites into your homestead. Paigey, can you grab the dog? He wants to come in. Thank you. Um, or go run with him. Can you get your shoes on and go run with him? Just for a second, so he'll go away from the door, okay? Do they? I'm sorry, but if he comes in, he's going to gallop everywhere. Um, so, with rabbits. I know with milk goats, I said, make sure to taste the milk. Make sure to handle the mom. Make sure to milk the, the goat you're thinking about buying. With rabbits, I don't think it's quite... I guess it could be the same. Depending on how a person butchers their rabbits, you can have off flavors in the meat. If the animal is terrified or if the animal is in pain when they die, it can cause the meat to taste very bad. And so depending on how the person you're buying rabbits from, depending on how they butcher that rabbit, you, you know, you could go and buy rabbit from them um, that's already been butchered and taste it, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that's the flavor that animal is going to have on your property because of the whole fear factor thing and how you butcher them. Um, Village Sitter said, I have to fly under the radar with anything. So if you're flying under the radar, a great source of eggs is Muscovy ducks because they have this teeny tiny little hiss that they make. They don't make a bigger noise than that. And also, yes, rabbits. Um, so I'll try, and, I'll try and keep a straight train of thought on this. Um, when I got into rabbits, okay, I should, I should start further back than that. Rabbits can be tricky if you don't approach them in a very straightforward way, really understanding what you're doing. For one thing, um, generally speaking, do not buy an old dough. Um, when I sell old doughs, I sell them bread. I do not sell them open. I do not sell them dry. They will have just weaned a baby and they will be bred if I sell a dough. Um, I do not sell really old doughs. The oldest that I will sell a dough is at like two years. The reason for that is that as rabbits age, their fertility goes down. So if you're buying an older dough from somebody, the reason they're selling it to you is because she, um, her fertility has gone down. 
I will sell a rabbit when she's having eight babies regularly and I want 12. So most of my rabbits start out um, in the mid teens is how many babies they'll have. And then they'll keep about 12. Um, if I have a rabbit that used to have 14 babies and now has eight babies, I will sell her pregnant and tell the person, look, she's two, but she's a great way to get started with breeding stock as far as like take her babies and turn them into your breeding stock. Um, and so the way that I finally figured out the trick with rabbits was that I started to breed my rabbits at about four and a half, five months, instead of waiting till they're six months when they're supposed to be really fertile and viable. I start breeding them at four and a half, maybe five months. And the reason I do that is not to get them pregnant. It's to get them used to going in with the buck. Um, fear is a really big thing for rabbits. It really affects them. And so as a young doe, I'll start to put her in with the buck for just a few seconds to get her used to the fact that she's going to be taken out of her cage and put in his cage. He might try to breed her. He might not. And then I take her and put her back in her cage. And we do that every couple weeks for a while. And um, usually they actually take when they're five months old. I really like to breed young does. It keeps their fertility really, really high. Um, Frith Wave said, watching and learning from every video. Oh, thank you. Um, 160 acre homestead said quail are the best turnaround meat source. Yeah, quail are very good. The thing with quail is that you have to buy uh, a ex very expensive mixed feed for them. They need their B vitamins very, they really have to have their B vitamins or they just lay down and die. It's hard to mix feed for quail. <coughs> they really like alfalfa, like alfalfa sprouts too. Um, and they are very efficient. One bag of feed for like 20 quail is going to last you for six months. Um, they, they just have, they're, they're wonderful. They're just not something I'm focusing on right now. Um, good morning. Good morning. Christy Bet said, that's a lot of bunnies. J Bell said, what breed of rabbit do you recommend for someone just starting with rabbit raising? So let me, let me go back to the breeding really quick. Andrea Blue said, is there any way to get a rabbit to breed after not having litter since last year? Okay, so here's, here's all of that that I'm going to tell you. If a rabbit doe is not bred constantly, she will go sterile. She will go sterile. If you give her a rest of more than a few weeks, her fertility will go like that. So let me explain uh, what, what happened with our family and our rabbits. We had gone into rabbits and we had just bought backyard rabbits and just kind of whoever wanted to sell us rabbits, we buy rabbits and we were buying older does, older proven does, but a proven doe with a rabbit um, in a move from one homestead to another, her, her fertility can change because um, fear, new surroundings, new buck, new cage, stress. Stress does bad things to rabbits. So what I like to do now that I have some experience and I have, have had good results now is I like to buy a rabbit from somebody who's already raising rabbits for meat because it means that he is cycling through those does and keeping them bred because a doe that doesn't get bred goes sterile. Um, if you give a doe a rest of more than a few weeks after she's weaned her babies before you breed her again, you're going to risk having her go um, at, at the very least her fertility tanks. So our best doe that we have right now, when she had her baby, she had 18 babies, her first go around 18. She kept 14 of them. She, she raised 14 of them. She was amazing. We bred her very, very young, but she didn't take the first few times. So at four and a half, five months, we started breeding her. She didn't take, she didn't take, she didn't take. And then when she finally did take, she had 18 babies and kept 14. Um, her daughters and our other rabbits, we've done the same thing with. The more consistent we were with getting them bred young, the more babies they had. So our, um, our, uh, we have anywhere from nine to 14 or 15 is generally the rule of thumb for our does. Their first time they have babies, anywhere from nine to 15. And, and then they generally keep many of them. 
Uh, let's see. Our last first timer, she had 11. She had them on the wire. She, she didn't understand the nest box yet. So we let, we just gave her massive amounts of hay. She built herself a nest, a big nest. Pretty much her whole pen was a nest. We didn't know where she was going to have them. And so once she had her babies, what we did is we went in and put them in the nest with all her hair and her wool and everything, and then put that back into her cage without messing up the rest of her hay nest. We just nestled the nest box in with her hay nest. And she had 11 and three of them got chilled. And um, one of them, I think, uh, was not not right when it was born. So how many did she have? Did she have seven in the end? She was five. No, the gray mama. Yeah, she was nine. Did she have nine? Oh, she had 11 and now she has nine. Are you sure? I thought she had seven. She lost two. She only lost two. I thought she lost three. Anyway, first time mama, babies are nice and big and fat. Great mama. The next one, she had nine. Uh, two of them crawled out of the nest. We did the same thing. She wasn't interested in this box. So we just stuffed hay in there and let her make her nest where she wanted to. Once she had the babies, we took them out. We put them in the nest box, put the nest box back in, and she's a great mama. Generally, that's how the first time goes, is that they're very confused. They'll have the babies on the wire. If you give them enough bedding, they will make a nest. And um, in that nest, it will buy you time to come out and see the babies are there, put them in a nest box, and Bob's your uncle. I don't use wooden nesting boxes. I use little Rubbermaid totes. I drill a hole in the corners and then I put snaps on that so that I can put it in and snap it to the cage so she can't knock it over, but they're very easy to clean. And you can see the babies inside the, um, the nest box. Let's see anything else. Cation said, I'm just starting with meat rabbits. I currently have a Flemish doe, New Zealand buck and mixed doe. I'm looking to making a better mix for my area. What are your thoughts on colony raising? So I have had a couple rabbits that were in colonies and it's the only time that I've had parasites in my rabbit. I had a, I had a friend who raised some rabbits in colonies. She gave me two rabbits that she didn't want anymore. The reason was the other rabbits were trying to kill them, attacking them constantly, trying to kill them. And so she asked me if I wanted them. So I took them and I put them in a colony system inside a hotbed and um, what ended up happening was that there was something wrong with one of them. The buck was okay and he was fine, but the doe was neurotic. Like she had this weird head twitch and she would jump around everywhere. And then she would just sit for hours and stare at things. And in the end, I, they weren't getting pregnant. They weren't getting pregnant. And so I butchered both of them. The buck, the one that was just acting like a normal rabbit and was in there with her was fine. He, I butchered him out and he was fine. He's just a rabbit. The doe that acted weird, when I butchered her, she was absolutely cram packed. Her whole intestinal organs were cram packed full of really big, long round worms. And um, she was pregnant at the time. Um, but it, it, when I butchered her, it turned out she had been pregnant, but she was very thin and she was absolutely cram packed with these round worms. It was disgusting. And the reason, so what I have found is that if you have animals that all pick on one particular animal, a lot of times there's a reason they see this animal as a threat to their own survival, to the survival of the whole. And I found that um, a lot of times uh, the animals know better than I do when there's something wrong with one of these animals. And, and sometimes it's that they bring disease, sometimes it's parasites, sometimes it's just that they're not genetically sound. So um, since that, I have not tried any kind of colony style. But the, the weird thing is, is those two rabbits were in the same colony. One of them had a, predispos a predisposition to be uh, uh, vulnerable to parasites, and the other one didn't. Um, genetics make a massive difference. These genetics, parasites weren't going to phase them, and they didn't have any. This genetics had, I've never seen that many parasites in, in one little anything. I've never seen parasites like that. It was so gross. Um, all right, so... As far as the breed, I don't think it matters what kind of breed it is. What I do think matters is the source of who you get your animals from, because if they're already butchering rabbits, in order to make that um, feasible, as far as how much money you're putting into them and what's coming into your house, um, Paigey, I need you to go get dressed for school, please. Get up. Come on. Scoot, scoot. 
Yeah. Um, you need somebody who's already doing it. Um, the rabbits that I have right now are New Zealand Rex Cross, and we've been raising them for three years, and they're fantastic. I've never had a stomach upset, even though I feed them uh, mostly vegetables and, and little fruit branches and things like that. We also have them down from not eating commercial pellets. One bag of commercial pellets can last me for like two months with 20 rabbits because we're feeding them sunflower seeds, locally grown wheat, and locally grown hay. And I do keep commercial pellets in there, but they're not really that interested in it. Um, and so they don't go through it hardly at all. Marjorie Woodcraft raises her rabbits in a colony situation. She's done very in interesting videos. Yes. Um, and I have done colony raising and I intend to try to find a way to do colony raising. But what I won't do is I won't put my breeders in colony. And the reason for that is that I want to make sure that I'm preserving my genetic sources from parasites and predation. And so I'll put young rabbits in a colony system. And that's what I'm trying to do right now. If you guys saw the end of the video I put up yesterday, um, the cage system that I was talking about at the end, for those who want to go support me on Patreon or something, I'm trying to get the materials together to create a run system that's a colony system, but that is not in contact with the dirt. <coughs> something that allows you to make compost and let the rabbits raise themselves up on and make amazing compost for you and have a space to run and be happy and play, but that is not in contact with dirt. So that's what I'm trying to create right now. It's expensive because it's big. And I know that a lot of people don't like the structures that I make because they are from secondhand materials. So I'm trying really hard to find a way to afford making hotbeds that look more beautiful and more urban uh, appropriate or suburban appropriate and also to make these rabbit runs. Can you go wake your dad up? He's got work in town today, please. Thank you. Um, and so that's what I'm trying to do. <laughs> I don't know, I, I don't know. With I'm trying to show people how to do this stuff so they can do it in their backyard and people don't know that they're growing food. But in order to have it be beautiful and something people don't mind having in a more residential area, I've got to buy new supplies instead of using my secondhand supplies and that's been tricky for me. Um, Andrea Blusa, did you consume the meat from the infested rabbit? No. If I have an, a sick animal or anything, that rabbit went in a garbage sack and it went in the trash. If, if I was going to dispose of it on my property, I would have burned it instead of burying it. It was so bad. Yeah, I, I actually took video of the situation, but then I didn't post it because I was worried it would gross people out. And this was years ago. This was like 10 years ago. This was not any time recent. All right, Christy Betts said, do you use any dewormer? I don't need to. The animals that I have are, the, the rabbits I have don't have worms. We keep them up off the ground. We bring them good hay. We bring them good, clean water. And um, the vegetables we give them are all above the ground vegetables. And for the most part, they're from the hotbeds, not from the front garden. The hotbeds don't have actual soil in them. Uh, and so the rabbits don't come in contact with anything that had soil on it. Um, go ahead and get your hair brushed, Tenny. All right. Um, I do use dewormers on my goats, my pigs, and my sheep. And that's because they are in contact with soil and they do need dewormers occasionally. Uh, the, the natural dewormer that I use is called Molly's, Molly's Herbal Dewormer, I believe. Kayshin said, my rabbits are in a very large raised chicken coop that turned into a rabbit colony, so they're off the ground. Yeah, and I think if the rabbits are only in contact with their own manure rather than other animals' manure, uh, they're probably just fine. And that is something that I'm aiming for. And I've seen it be very successful before. No, go in the bathroom and go get your hair done. Come on. Um, let's see. Bloomer Red Pill Girl said, just bought a buck and two does. Awesome. Yeah, I would say what I like to do when I'm starting with animals, anytime I'm bringing something new, I'll get something that's almost breeding age. If I have am buying something that isn't pregnant yet, I want it to be almost breeding age. And, and then I stay on top of it to keep them bred. Uh, we did give our best mom that had the 18 babies. We gave our best mom 
a break for about six weeks this summer. And when we did that, she went from having 18 babies in a litter and keeping 14 to having eight babies. She kept all of them. She kept eight babies, but it means I lost out on 10 potential babies. And since a lot of the money that I make here on the homestead is from selling these babies as breeders for $25 a piece, that's a $200 loss in one batch because I gave her a six week break and she went from 18 to eight. Eight is my default. If you don't have eight babies and keep eight babies, you're, you can't stay on the farm. Um, let's see. Boyd Chapman said, try a use 10 by 10 dog kennel. Um, yes, you could definitely do that. You want to have a concrete floor if you're going to do that, or at the very least a wire underneath the whole thing. But the other thing is that baby rabbits, you know, a chain link like this, that's a, a dog kennel, a chain link like this, even an adult rabbit can get through that if they try hard enough. And so you'd have to wrap the bottom with some other kind of wire. So um, again, that's why I'm trying to find a way to make this run system work really well. Bottom being at least that much. because At least because they they'll climb. climb. Yeah, rabbits will climb. Unless you have unhealthy rabbits. If you don't have healthy, vibrant, vibrant rabbits, they may not try to get out of your cage. If they already have parasites, if they're malnourished, then they're not going to maybe necessarily be trying to get out of that cage. But my babies, oh my gosh, my babies climb the walls in their cage. And they're, they're these little tiny fluff balls and they're climbing the walls. Um, and that's what happened the last time we tried to do a, a run cage system was that the babies weren't necessarily going through, they were going over. And this is almost a four foot high enclosure with a lid. Um, Frith Wave said, what about feeding your cats rabbit meat? So we do feed our rabbit, or sorry, we do feed our cats naturally. We have found that when we try to give our cats commercial uh, cat food, it makes them really, really sick. They start to have respiratory problems. Um, they can lose hair. And so um, sometimes in the winter, we don't have as many meat scraps as we like to. And then we will give them cat food. It makes them super sick. Um, so what we do is we feed our cats the, the guts from any butchering, except pigs, and any uh, bones or anything we have coming from the kitchen, the cats eat that too. So yes, the cats eat very well here on our homestead from what we feed them. <clears throat> Christy Bett said, growing up, my dad always built rabbit hutches off the ground. Yeah, our rabbit hutches are off the ground. Andrew Blue said, we have used old steel silo rings and metal siding for a home pole barn cut two feet high, screwed together in circles as raised beds, some recycled, some new cheaper than what's today lasts a long time. Yeah, our local two by four, Cost twelve dollars currently. A regular eight foot two by four is twelve dollars. I went and and went in to buy some because I wanted to get some more frames built to hang the rabbit cages in, and I could only buy five. <laughs> it cleaned me out pretty good. Um, hey Tasha, yeah. For any of you who have, didn't see my my little interview I did with um, Wanda over at. Deep South Homestead. It's on her Crazy Days channel, D-A-Z-E, Crazy Days. And so go check that out. So welcome. Um, let's see. Yeah, Houdini rabbits. Yeah. So if an adult wild rabbit will run right through a chain link fence. Yeah. Uh, if you have a really nice, healthy, uh, domesticated rabbit, they will do the same thing. And so in order to keep them safe, in order to keep them contained and, and protect your investment, you need to have Fort Knox to keep things from getting into it and to keep it from getting out. And which is why I'm trying so hard to figure out how to do this. Um, but I think it's really important. If I can figure out how to do it, it means I can, I can bring them more bulky food instead of... Um, having in, in a regular wire cage, you have so little space. It's hard to give them enough hay and enough roughage to imitate what they would have in the wild without taking up all their cage space. And so I think the more that I could just bring them um, bigger branches and, um, and allow them to be together and play and, and rough house and do their thing, I think they'd be healthier. Mine are incredibly healthy, but I can't imagine how much healthier they'd be if that was a scenario that I could do. Um, right. 
Brandy said we biblically clean, but I want rabbits for fertilizer. So yes, they're fantastic for that. And I think that, you know, in the beginning when I had rabbits, I had them for their uh, fertilizer, not for their meat. And I use their fertilizer in my hotbeds. I use my fertilizer uh, from the rabbits as a mulch around new, new perennial plantings. And it works so well. I love rabbit manure. Um, and I was also a, uh, raised to eat Levitically. And um, uh, I did change that when we moved to this homestead just because um, we were eating things that were not uh, kosher in the grocery store. And so it didn't make sense to me to like, well, if we're buying pork from the grocery store and if we're eating other things in the grocery store that aren't, aren't clean, then why am I not just raising them? Which is what we did. Um, T. Hans said, I need to get rabbits. So I'm going to build a new chicken coop and make a place for a couple rabbit hutches in the feed storage room. Cool. Yes. Thank you, Pristanic. I do need more likes. If you guys want to do a thumbs up, that'd be great. Um, Robert Rittenhouse said, IKR. To heck with gas prices. I want to be able to afford to buy wood to build things. I know, right? Um... Tasha said, what do y'all put in the rabbit ears to get rid of ear mites? Um, so we don't have ear mites in our rabbits. I don't know if that's just because of the source of our rabbits or because um, we live in a cold enough area that a lot of uh, skin parasites are, it's hard for them to hop from animal to animal because it's cold. <laughs> It's really cold here. And in the time it takes for it to go to one animal to another, they'd have to be in really close contact because of the cold. I have no idea. Um, I know that for lice, we have had some problems with lice going from the chickens after they've been in their coop all year to the goats. And, um, and then sometimes to us, but they never get very far. If, if we get lice, uh, from an animal. It's not a lice that likes people as much as it likes animals. You put coconut oil in your hair and it's, it's gone. Um, as far as mites and other things, oil pretty much is my understanding of the best thing to do because it, they can't breathe when you have all the oil on it. But since I've never had mites in my rabbit ears, I can't really speak to that. But I do know that a lot of times with that kind of skin parasite, oil can be a solution. Not like not like essential oils because rabbits and dogs and other animals can be very sensitive to essential oils. So I mean something more like coconut oil. Um, all right. Aaron said, how thickly do you spread rabbit manure? So when I am using it as a mulch, generally it's in, it has some hay bits left in it and that kind of thing. But I, I put it on thick. Like I put it on like that. If I, I have very depleted soils that are mostly rock. And so when I plant something like raspberries, I'll actually take my rabbit manure and put it around the, the raspberries this thick all the way around. I don't have it right next to the plant, so I'll give the, the plant a little bit of space, like a couple inches around it at the bottom, so that it's not in contact with the rabbit manure, but I mulch with rabbit manure. And I do the same thing with strawberry plants, and it works so well. One of the reasons is, is because the rabbit manure is so rich that it will kill weed seeds as they germinate any kind of seed that tries to germinate in rabbit manure isn't going to make it because it's just too rich. It's too hot, not hot as in burn a mature plant, but hot as in if you have it as just rabbit manure, any seedling that comes up is going to get burned by that manure just because that's all that's there. Um, hey, Cindy. Um, Rachel Pullman said a lightweight carrier or with tea trail. Um, so I would, I would definitely leave that between you guys because I I haven't used um, tea trail or anything on my smaller, very thin skinned animals. Mineral oil. Okay. Christy said mineral oil. Hey, Esther's and Acres. Steve Cross said, good morning. We tried meat rabbits about seven years ago. Tried crossing a California buck with New Zealand doe. One doe killed all our babies. The other had four that lived and one was deformed. Um, so T hand uh, said, so rabbit manure is okay with transplants, but not seeds, right? If it's 100% rabbit manure, then yeah, it's okay for transplants as a mulch, as a mulch. Uh, for seeds, what I do is I mix the rabbit manure into the potting soil, or 
what I'll do is I'll have um, rabbit manure underneath the potting soil. So I'll have in my hotbeds, I have my layers of carbon and manure, and then I'll put like a layer of cardboard and then I'll put a layer of rabbit manure and then I'll put my potting soil. And what happens is by the time the roots for seeds get down to that um, rabbit manure, it is ready. It, it has broken down enough that it won't burn the roots. Honey, did you want to get out your um, waffle maker and get your breakfast made? As long as you don't mind the beeping. Well, otherwise you need to go find something else to do because you can't just sit here. You, you need to be moving. Um, Karen Martin said, mites and cat's ears. I mix injectable one part, 0.5% ivermectin to three parts mineral oil. I think it would be fine for rabbits too. Aaron Evans said, do you use rabbit manure tea for seedlings? I don't use rabbit manure tea for seedlings. I use rabbit manure tea to inoculate the potting soil with bacteria. Um, I find that it's a, it's, it, the balance isn't perfect with rabbit manure tea for the seedlings themselves. What you do instead is you inoculate the soil and then the good microbes and the red worms and everything start to turn things into what they should be. I'm letting the bacteria do the work instead of me, uh, which is why I like the hotbeds so much is because the hotbeds give me this massive amount of compost that breaks down as I put the rabbit manure tea into it. By Village Setter. Okay, I have got a kiddo who needs to be getting ready to go take her classes. So um, hopefully this was helpful. I did really quickly want to tell you how I feed my rabbits now. Um, so when I got these last, this la when I first started with these rabbits three years ago, uh, they I got them for a dollar a piece. The guy that was raising them had way more than he needed and he didn't have any room in his freezer. And so he was selling uh, these rabbits for a dollar a piece. I got like 25 of them. And that's where we got our original breeding stock. We butchered most of them, kept the ones that were the best, started breeding them. And I had so many rabbits that I needed to find a way to feed them without um, all the pellets. And so I, I planted hotbeds just for the rabbits. Uh, planted them very thickly, cut and come again, cut and come again. So those rabbits were eating 75% of their feed was from the garden. Fast forward to now, uh, as feed prices have gone up, I, f I have tried to find other ways to really cut back on the pellets even further. During the winter and everything, I don't have greens to give to the rabbits. And so again, uh, locally grown organic wheat, sunflowers, and hay is primarily what I'm feeding them right now. And it means that I still have commercial pellets, but I'm going through a bag every couple months. Um, and even the babies are doing just fine. If you don't have enough protein for baby rabbits, they will die. They will die of mal malnutrition. And it's very sad to see this. They'll just lay down in their cage and they'll like kind of get paralyzed. And then they, they're still alive, but they're, they're, they just can't move. And it's because rabbits, when they go from baby to about three months, they're growing so fast. They're putting on, you know, they're born and they look like a little mouse. By three months, they're like a 10 pound rabbit. It's a massive amount of weight to put on. And the way that they do that is with protein. And so generally people say that you can't raise rabbits without commercial pellets because it doesn't, you can't get enough protein from natural um, resources, but you can. I've done a lot of research and it turns out that sweet potato um, vines, not yam vines, not legitimate yam vines, the big gnarly looking things, but sweet potato vines, you can feed a rabbit 100% on sweet potato vines and they reach butchering maturity like three days later than those on commercial pellets. So that's the only difference. So I'm growing a lot of sweet. In fact, I've got them back here. Um, Danny and Wanda from Deep South Homestead have a little ebook, and I followed it to the letter. And I have sweet potatoes. I have three of them that I'm doing, and I I can't put them in the ground. I have to put them in a hotbed because we we're still going to have freezing temperatures until the end of June. 
but they grow just fine in the hotbed. If you watched the video yesterday, you would have seen my sweet potato vines in my hotbed, in my greenhouse. And we've had uh, temperatures down to three degrees above zero Fahrenheit with the sweet potatoes out in the greenhouse. Um, Christy said $1 piece, awesome deal. Yeah, watch Craig's list. Um, don't ever buy animals from somebody that um, doesn't really know what they're doing. If they're just hobbyists and they just kind of don't really know anything about their own rabbits, don't get your rabbits from them. Get your rabbits from somebody that's really excited about rabbits and has a freezer full of rabbit. Um, where can we get rabbits today? So I got mine on Craigslist. Mine are not registered. Mine are New Zealand Rex Cross and um, they're amazing. I've only ever had one rabbit have an upset stomach and that was when I had a root vegetable, a beet that went into uh, feed them and the beet had not been washed. Not all the animals got sick, but one animal did get a bellyache and die. And so since then I've stuck uh, as, you know, that was a fluke. We don't put root vegetables in for our animals, but um, I've gone back to being very strict about that. We don't put root, root vegetables in or anything that was in contact with soil. The front garden, we get the vegetables there to give to pigs there. Um, and then we keep the hotbeds as our source for food for the rabbits because it hasn't been in contact with soil. Um, Okay, so anyway, I think that's it. I told you what I feed them, and is there anything else? I don't think there's anything else. Oh, butcher when the size is appropriate for your family. For a long time, we were doing the, the normal recommended age and weight of a butcher of a fryer, which is about three months. I'll wait. <laughs> okay, she's trying to make waffles. Um, I, when we first started, we, <laughs> okay, so we would wait to butcher for three months, but uh, one of my three month rabbits is massive. They're massive. And what we found was that we would cook the rabbit and then we would have as many leftovers left as what we had just eaten as a family. And I just muddled through that for a couple years. And then last year I looked and I'm like, why don't I just butcher them younger? They eat a lot of food at three months. Why don't I instead butcher them at eight weeks, four weeks earlier? Because we can eat an eight-week rabbit at one sitting, and I don't have all the extra feed into them. And so that's what we started to do. We butcher them now at somewhere between eight and ten weeks. Eight weeks is better than ten weeks. And um, the only young animals that we let get to three months are the ones that we're experimenting with to see how they look, to see if we want to keep them as breeders. So, um, Christy Bet said a cousin gave our rabbit potato peeling and it died. Oh, that's too bad. Um, I've never given potato peelings to my Was rabbits. It Was it green? I don't know, honey. Um, so anyway, uh, breed early and breed often. So when we wean a batch of baby rabbits, that's when we breed them on. And we wean anywhere from five to eight weeks. If she starts to look haggard, if she starts to look like she doesn't want to be in the cage with them anymore and she's running away to get away from them, we take the babies out and wean them at that point. A lot of times we like to leave two babies in with her to keep her company and also to nurse her a little bit so that she doesn't get mastitis. And um, Paige, make sure to make enough for everybody, okay? Make sure to make enough for everybody, okay? Um, breed early, breed often. Try to get locally sourced feed. And um, get them from somebody who already raises meat rabbits. That's what I would say. Yeah, Forrest said, I feed my rabbits with organic carrots washed, of course, with no problem. Yeah, and I'm, I'm sure that's the case. For us, uh, the beet had not been washed. And I, here's the other thing. I make a lot of money with my rabbits. If I have eight babies in a nest and I sell them for $25 a piece, at weaning at five weeks, I can sell them and, and make $200 off of that nest of rabbits. And I feel really good about it because they any of my rabbits that I sell, you could use them for breeders. They're all great rabbits. Um, but 
the difference between just, you know, giving them specially grown vegetables that don't cost me any more to grow um, and, and taking it off above the dirt and giving it to them in, I have pigs that'll eat beets all day long and carrots. Uh, and so I'm, while I might experiment a little bit with root vegetables for my younger baby rabbits, I won't experiment with it for my breeders. And I'm hesitant to experiment with it with my baby rabbits. And that's because they're worth so much money to me. Um, now we do put them in our own freezer. We have rabbit in the freezer. I don't sell rabbits until we have rabbit in the freezer but we always have rabbit. And so it, it's just a money maker for the property. All right, Tammy, you're welcome. Uh, Steve Cross said, have you tried sprouting grain for fodder? Yes, and my rabbits don't really care for it. They much prefer regular vegetables to something that's sprouted. I think it's too sweet. There's too much sugar in it and they just, they just don't really care for it. Um, so, <clears throat> Yes, in fact, I have video from January of doing grain and beans and sunflowers and alfalfa. I sprouted all those in January. I wanted to see if the rabbits wanted to be on it. And honestly, what they love the most is right now in our hotbeds in the little $100 greenhouse, we've got greens coming up like this. They're totsoy and also radishes. And I'm thinning that out now for the rabbits and they love it. Oh, so much more than they love sprouted anything. Um, 160 acre homes has said, I raise silver fox rabbits and I get $60 per rabbit, which I think is amazing. Um, for me, my turnover to sell them as soon as they're weaned for me, that is what I, well, it's not really what I love to do because you get a lot of rabbit manure from baby rabbits. This year I had a waiting list. And so with the waiting list, I have all the babies that are weaned are, are going to their homes very, very quickly. I don't have enough rabbits to keep up with my demand. If um, if I had more rabbits and I felt like I could keep up with it a little better, maybe I would charge more, but only if I was raising them up probably to breeding age. So, and at that, you've got silver fox. Those are pretty special rabbits. We've done silver fox before, but I got her as an established older doe. And um, she probably would have been great and fine, but I had uh, kids helping me with chores at the time and she didn't get watered one day while she was very pregnant and she, uh, she didn't make it. So my, um, and then we had another silver fox that ate her babies. Again, she was an established doe. I, I didn't know at the time how important it is to get young stock, um, especially if you're inexperienced, to give yourself time to experiment with how you do your, your system before they're too old and it starts to be a problem if they don't get bred. Um, Forrest said, is, is alfalfa okay for rabbits? I use Timothy hay. I use whatever I have. I have a grass hay mix and that's the one that I prefer to give to them, but I also have straight alfalfa and they do, just, my rabbits do fine on it. Uh, most of what is in a rabbit pellet that's commercially mixed is alfalfa. It's very high in pro protein. But so are sweet potato vines. Also kudzu. I did get a root of kudzu and I am growing it in the house, trying to see if I can get it to go and see if I can have a house plant that feeds my rabbits. Um, Demi Brock said, my rabbits get the runs and die if I feed anything fresh. I would love to feed them from the garden. I raise silver fox and chinchillas. So um, I started out with uh, branches. When I was when I started out with feeding the rabbits from the homestead, I started out with branches, and it seemed to make a really big difference in the transition. I gave them fresh branches that had leaves on it, like apples, or um, I do sea berries and and grape vines and that kind of thing. And that's what I started with, at and in the beginning. And I I have found the same thing with my dog when he came home to us he was getting sick from eating anything that was not commercial kibble. And anytime we like gave him a new kind of treat, it would also give him the runs. What ended up happening was, is that when he started to be able to go outside with us more and he was eating things like goose poop and um, sniffing around and just chewing on everything in the world over the course of about a month, his stomach stopped reacting to life and he stopped having, he stopped vomiting. He stopped having diarrhea at tiny, like 
things like yeah he couldn't have any kind of treat that was any kind of people food but after he started eating goose poop and stuff like that it's like it was yogurt for his gut and now he can eat anything he can eat raw meat he can um he can change any kind of treats he can eat different kinds of dog food and it was like him acting like a normal dog inoculated his belly so that he was a normal dog um with the rabbits what i started with was tree cuttings and the reason for that was because it was up off the ground. It wasn't going to be in as much contact with things that could make them sick. And then a little bit over time, I started to introduce them to Swiss chard and parsley. And um, I don't give them lettuce, but I do give them um, I do give them Swiss chard and uh, and that kind of thing. Christy Bet said, so start putting the dough with the buck around four to five months. Yeah. Um, I, I, I put them in at about f somewhere between four and five months. Just every once in a while, I'll just go pop her in and make sure it's a good experience for her. And then once it starts to look like she's actually lifting, that's when I start to count the days. And um, the first time that she lifts, I consider it a breed and I mark it on the calendar. If she doesn't kindle within that, uh, you know, 32 day period, then we do it again. But if she lifts and, and I don't, I don't ever, honey, um, go get your hair done, please in the bathroom. If I don't, um, it's okay. You can lift the chart. Um, if she never lifts, then I don't consider her bread, but I don't leave her in the cage without me watching to see, because I don't want to set her up for failure. If it turns out that she did get bread, even though she didn't lift and he didn't roll off and do his thing, then um, if she starts to act nesty and starts to move things around with her mouth, I'll give her a massive amount of hay. I'll just put hay in every single day and I'll watch and see, is she actually getting ready to nest? Because a lot of times the first time they have their babies, they really don't know what's going on. They don't know what to do. And so literally her whole cage will have this much hay in it. By the time she kindles, packed down, and, and she'll have it ready for a nest. And then by the second time she has babies, she'll just have them in, the, in her nest box. But the first time, she doesn't really know what's going on. So as soon as she starts carrying things around in her mouth, we give her hay. We give her hay. Every day, we give her more hay until she's happy with her nest and she stops fiddling with it. Um, let's see. Yes, Andrea said, young branches, not fruit. Very correct. I give them branches not fruit. So mulberry branches, little apple branches, pear branches, um, branches from willows. Um, Bloomer L. Red Pilled Girl said, I use pellets, Bermuda, and fodder. What do you think about oats? I think oats are great. I have a really great little book that I found on Amazon, and it's about feeding your animals naturally. I don't know where it is. I should go find it. Um, and mostly what he's saying is uh, you need to know what your protein and your um, carbohydrate mixes are in a lot of different things and then just mix them according to what does well with your rabbits. For my rabbits, black oil, sunflower seeds, and wheat do really well. Um, but a lot of people do oats, and they do really well on the oats too. Um, Village Sitter said that applies to all animals. Christy Bet said, one doc told me to make a slur slurry of healthy rabbit poop and give to sick bunny Ugh, for stomach issues. Really? Andrew Blue said, I get so grossed out watching my dogs go after chicken poop. I know it's real, but it's like yogurt for their belly. It's even worse with cat poop. Okay, okay. honey, go get your hair done. Go get your hair done. Okay. Uh, Bloomer said, oh, I grow Swiss chard. How do you add that? So after they're used to eating branches and things like that, small, you start small, small branches. Um, after you've done that for a bit, you can put in a little tiny piece of this and a little tiny piece of that. I find that variety makes a pretty big difference. Uh, the more variety, the better, but also I, it's not in ground. It's above the ground. I don't want something that's contaminated with dirt. Um, Chrissy said, replaces good bacteria. That's very interesting. I had, ugh. So for me, with most of my animals, if they have, if they get sick, there are a few exceptions. 
if they get sick the first time, we'll get them well. The second time they get sick, I remove them from the breeding stock. And um, with rabbits, I don't even give them one chance. If they get sick, they're not breeding stock. They're put in a quarantine cage and um, I don't butcher them and then, you know, eat them myself. Uh, there's something that um, gets burned or something like that with the rabbits. Uh, with the goats, if I have a goat that gets mastitis, um, I sell her for super cheap with the understanding that she gets mastitis and I don't keep her because it's a recurring thing. It shows an imbalance in their system. And so for me, the way that I can afford to do what I do is that I don't have vet bills um, or very, very rarely do I have vet bills. Thank you, honey. Um, I have had vet bills where there was a one-off thing. Like if I had a goat that couldn't get into her shelter because the others were bullying her and she got wet in the rain and she now has a fever and a runny nose, I will take her to the vet. Um, if I have something that went weird, something that went wrong and it was my own fault, it wasn't something wrong with the animal because of its genetic makeup, uh, then of course I'll get the animal well. But if it's something like mastitis where, I'm not the one that did it and the animal is continues to get mastitis. I don't keep them. I just don't keep them because even if it's not genetic, it may just be that they were in contact with something that is in their system and I'm not going to fight it. I'm, I'm just going to move on. I'll give full disclosure to who I sell it to that this is what's going on and I'll sell it cheap enough that, um, you know, they'll use that goat to raise bottle calves or something on, if that makes sense, instead of bringing it into the house for their own use. Um, the book is Beyond the Pellet. Thank you very much. Yes. Erin um, Evans said, are you cautious about oxalates and calcium content of greens when feeding? No. The reason is that they're rabbits. They're kind of like a ruminant. Uh, with rabbits, what they'll do is they have a special poop that they eat that is like yogurt for their gut and it it makes them well. And so they, what what is the word for that? Uh, it starts with the C. Um, I don't remember what it's called, but they have a special poop that they eat. Every All their other poop goes through, but they have a special poop that they'll eat that is like yogurt for their gut. And so they are recycling a lot of food and the way that they digest is different than how we digest. And so in a normal situation for a rabbit, they're going to eat everything. They're going to eat bark on trees. They're going to eat grass. They're going to eat clover. They're going to eat your garden vegetables. Um, they're going to eat vines. They're going to eat everything. And it's all going to be uh, plant material. And so their gut is meant to eat plant material. Um, if I was eating that many, that much Swiss chard, I would be worried about it. But I don't digest things the same way that a rabbit does. Um... Oh my gosh. Christy said that, oh my gosh, that's a real thing. How do you do it? Do you like put it in a little syringe? I'll do. Here. There you go. Love you. All right. Did you open the door for dad? The gate? No. Did you need her to open the gate for you? Okay. Syringe. All right. Syringe. So how do you do it? That's where you work. Okay, Andrea Blue said, double check safety of your stone fruit trees. I believe peach and cherry are toxic. That's what they say. They say that it's toxic. Uh, I'm trying to think if I've ever given my rabbits. I don't think I give my rabbits peach or apricot or cherry for that very reason. Um, but I do give them a lot of apple. They're right under the crab apple. All right. Thank you. Copper... Phagic. They eat their own poop and it helps them with their digestion. It's essential for their digestion. Tihan says, so the poop slurry sounds kind of makes sense. Oh, <laughs> I feel so bad doing that to another animal. I mean, I mean, that I'm, I, I'm not saying it wouldn't work. Oh, did you want to go outside and dad's leaving? I'm sorry. <sighs> Bloomer said, in 30 years, we've had a vet for horses, goats, sheep, chickens, maybe five times. We're in the desert. So except for the wind, nothing sticks. Yes. And we're in the desert too. And that's one of the reasons why we don't have 
a lot of the same problems as people that are in more uh, warm and moist areas. Cicatropes. Yeah. Yeah, Steve Cross said they poop a jelly texture, poop at night and read it. The second time out, it is a pellet. Yeah. Chrissy said the South is horrible for parasites and diseases. And that's very true. When we were in Oklahoma, uh, I had to warm the horses. Oh, sometimes it seemed like every six weeks because they were just full of parasites. And we had ticks and there were bed bugs. It was, it was a lot. It was a lot. Lenny says, if the poop goes through the bottom of the cage, how are they able to eat it? So the rabbits actually, I don't know if you've ever seen a rabbit like try to clean itself, but it'll hunch itself over kind of like a cat when it's licking its own butt. And the rabbit will eat the poop as it comes out of its butt. And um, it catches that particular poop. It doesn't catch the rest of its poop. Um, Andrew Blue said, I have peach, no cherry, and we do have apples, mulberries, new crab apples. I get willow from a friend's property. Yeah. And willow is great. I mean, uh, I have a new book. Yeah, I have so many new books talking about how to raise your own food on your own property. It's, it's something that's really, really in my mind right now. Being able to feed your animals and your family without being reliant on the um, interstates being open or having trucks on it. You know? Good morning, Prep for Eternity. Okay, so I better go help my kiddos with milking. Oh, Tian said this discussion can only be found on a homesteading channel. LOL. Very true. All right, go ahead and wash your hands so you can come eat, kiddo. Um, all right. Yep, we got to go milk. So hopefully that was helpful. I The cages that I use are from Hostel Hair. I do have a link in the description. I have old cages that I built from the wire that they that you can get from True Value. They can ship it into your local true value. My original cages I made from that, but I lost so many baby rabbits because the babies could squeeze through the wires. And um, if you're in an area that's prone to snakes or rats, they can get in with normal rabbit wire. So for my breeders, for my mama rabbits, I had the hostile hair cages. And it's not that you can't build your own with that a special wire that he uses, the baby saber wire. It's that in order to get a roll of it, you have to buy this massive roll of it in order to get that particular type of cage wire. And so um, I love the recipes that he has on his website. I love, um, I love his thinking, the way he thinks about meat rabbits. He's very snarky about it and very upfront and honest about the fact that he is going to be eating these rabbits and um, that he's okay with that. So currently I have three of his cages and they are not inexpensive. When I bought them, I think they were $80. They come partially constructed and then you just have to put the other three sides together. They come flat. And um, I am saving up right now to get one more cage. And I, I just can't recommend them highly enough. That being said, they're 80 bucks. They, they are 80 bucks. And, but if I lose four baby rabbits, through my bad cages, that's paid for a new cage because of what I can sell them for. And so for me, it's totally worth it. He is an affiliate, has been for years. I love his cages, so I talk about him. And so his link is in the description somewhere, Hostel Hair. All right. Talk to you later.